Ahoy, this is Zdenka. A couple months ago, I created a complete walkthrough Wondershare Filmora 11 for beginners. For those who are not familiar with this software, it's a very easy video editing software, even for those with zero editing skills. I have placed a link to this software below the video in a video description in case you want to try it out, as well as link to the mentioned video. Today's video is another tutorial, this time kind of hands-on, in-depth. We're gonna pick a few things. We're gonna talk about speed ramping. We're gonna look at the auto-synchronization, all sound controls, and let's introduce a new theme, audio visualization. This video is sponsored by Wondershare Filmora. And if you are new here, this channel is all about photography and video, creative camera challenges, hidden giveaways, and vlogs. So if that's something you're interested in, consider subscribing. When you're editing, for example, a cinematic B-roll, you want to speed up certain parts and slow them down to make it more dramatic, to make it fit with the music, with the melody, with the rhythm. Let's open up Wondershare Filmora. Import the clip. Once I see it here at the top, I will add it to timeline. Let's click the speed icon and select speed ramping. And right now there is no speed ramping effect enabled yet. You can create your own and customize, or you can choose a quick pre-designed option. Montage, hero moment, bullet time, jumper, flash in and flash out. Let's select customize so I can explain you how this whole thing actually works. Right now, the video is in a real speed. So there is a line on one time speed. If I grab any of the key points and drag it up, the portion of the video will speed up. If I drag it down, it will slow down. Let's say I want this part way faster, so I drag it up. Here is another keyframe. The curve between shows where the video starts gradually speeding up. I can either drag the key points to choose where I want to start, if I don't want the keyframe, I can erase it by clicking the minus button here on the left. If I want to add another keyframe, just choose any spot and hit the plus button. If you don't like the changes you've made and you want to go back to the beginning, just hit reset. You can also create a freeze frame effect here by clicking this second icon from the left. Here you can adjust how long you want the effect to last. You can go as low as one second. To delete the freeze effect, hit the minus to erase it. If you like the effect you created and you want to use it in a future, you can save it as a custom preset. So now let's say I like the speed ramp I created with the freeze effect, so I hit OK. Now, when you look at the clip on a timeline, the little area which is gray is your freeze frame effect. When you click on it, you can still change the duration of this effect here, or you can even delete it. Let's say I want to add a glitch effect over this. I'm going to go to Effects, search for glitch, download one I think would work, and drag it over the freeze frame effect. You can adjust the length by dragging the sides. And now when you play it, it looks something like this. Let's talk about auto-synchronization. When is this helpful? Let's say I'm recording myself, as I'm recording myself right now with a smartphone, and I'm recording audio separately on this level later microphone because there is a built-in memory card, so I don't have to have anything attached to the smartphone. And I prefer audio from the left microphone. So how do I get the sound from the microphone on the smartphone video? That's when auto-synchronization comes in handy. So let's go back to Wondershare Filmora. I'm going to import both files and drag them onto the timeline. Video will be on one track and audio will be on another track. Click and drag to highlight both files. Now, as they are highlighted, you have two choices. You can right-click and select auto-synchronization or you can simply click on the last icon above. 
Once you hit that, the software will automatically sync those two files together. Now when you will play it, you will hear better audio, but you will also hear the audio from the smartphone. So what you can do is right click on the video clip and mute. That way you will only hear the audio file. Actually, I'm recording myself with a smartphone and I don't want to have the microphone connected to the smartphone. So I'm using this level ear, which is right here. And I have it um, connected to this little box because there is a actually internal memory card. Let's keep going with the sound. Wondershell Filmora has simple and creative tools, controls available. So let's explain when it comes to sound, what everything you can actually do here, how you can improve it, what creative changes you can make. So let's just import a random clip on the timeline. There are two sections where you can control audio. One option would be right clicking on a clip, go under audio. And here you have several choices. Silence detection, adjust audio, detach audio and mute. Another section would be this little icon on the right, which says audio mixer. Let's go to the first section of audio controls. I'm going to right click the clip and select the first one, which is silence detection. What is this useful for? If you record yourself in a studio, like I'm recording right now, and sometimes you forget what you want to say, or you're simply taking a little break, you're collecting your thoughts, you will end up with those silent breaks, the dead air, and you need to cut them out. What really takes time is going through the clip and manually cutting out all of those moments. With this tool, you just click and it will find these dead air moments for you. You can also adjust parameters such as volume threshold, minimum duration and softening buffer until you get the selections you want. You can also readjust those selections manually. Once you're done, hit export to the timeline and you just saved yourself lots of time. Second option under right clicking the clip would be to adjust audio. Once you hit that, the audio control panel shows up at the top. On the left side, you can make the volume of the clip louder or quieter by dragging this slider. Here at the bottom, you have a little icon. When you click that, it will add a keyframe to your clip. Let's say at the beginning of the sentence, the volume is a little bit stronger because of the microphone. So I want to bring that little part just a little bit, tiny bit down. I'm going to add a keyframe here at the beginning, another keyframe where the sound is already good. I'm going back to the first keyframe with the troublesome strong sound, select it until it turns green and simply drag the slider down to lower it a bit. If you want to delete the keyframe, make sure it is selected so it has to be green and then hit delete on the left. On the right side, you have more creative controls. You can have the clip fade in volume or fade out. You can adjust how slow of fade you want to create. Below is where you can change pitch or use an equalizer. You can use presets or you can customize the settings with these sliders. Denoise will get rid of any unwanted sounds in the background. There are three options there, weak, mild and strong. If you have other clips on a timeline, which you would like to lower, ducking is the feature to use. Slide the slider to select how much you would like to lower the sound. If you don't have any keyframes on that clip, you can try the auto normalization feature. Let's right click the clip one more time and see two last controls here. So one would be detach audio. This is when you need to basically separate the audio from the video. So when you right click, you can see that now it created two files and you can move the audio file away from the video. Mute is very straightforward. The clip will be silent. Let's go to the other section of audio controls I mentioned earlier, and that would be the audio mixer. And just a quick tip, whenever you're editing audio, listen to audio through headset. You don't want to rely on the speakers. On the left, you have sound panels of your video clip and soundtrack like music. To change levels, simply drag the slider up and down. You can also adjust the channel by moving this knob left and right. When you do this, you will switch the sound between left and right channels. When you move the knob, you will see the change here 
in the middle. When I drag the video one to the left, you can see it here. Let's play the sound so you can understand what I mean by this. So now you heard the audio coming out from one side of the headset only. So when you are working on a sound design, you can have some sound effects coming from the left and then the other sound effects coming from the other side. You can actually get very creative here. You can make it quite interesting. Let's move on. This section in the middle has two modes available, stereo or surround sound. We already saw how to control stereo by moving the channels left and right. So let's switch to surround sound. If you want to create a video which will be played with a surround sound system, you can be quite creative here as well. Now you can move the video audio and your music all around. So if you would be sitting in the middle of surround setup, this is where the sound would be heard. Majority of the people will watch your videos most likely in stereo mode, so let's put it back there. Last control panel on the left is master. Here is where you can control the sound of all your audio files on your timeline. When you go up, all sound will be louder. When you go down, all sound will be quieter. Once you are done with all changes, hit OK to save all settings. Let's stay with the word audio a bit more, but this time it's not going to be about audio controls. This software has a lot of pre-designed preset templates, which can make your editing seriously way faster. It can save you a lot of time. If you need something quick, new theme has been added, which is called audio visualization. You will find it under media and then under preset templates. Let's see the first one, which is energy music visualization. Hit download and then just drag it onto the timeline. You can replace the text and media for your own. If you want to replace text, just double click and change the text here, just like this. You can move it, you can adjust the size. If you want to change the photo, upload the photo to your media, hold the Alt key on your keyboard and drag the photo to replace the default photo. The same goes with the music. You can replace that as well. Once you change all that, this is what you are going to get. It is quite useful. It'll save a lot of time. There are quite a bit of more themes to choose from, like the YouTube channel, game, military, high tech, travel, and memes. If you would like to have this audio effect on, for example, a B-roll or even talking head, you can go to effects and look for audio visualizer. Just choose one of the looks you like. This is super easy to use. Place your clip on the timeline, place this effect above your preferred clip and you are all set. You can adjust the length of the effect by dragging it to the sides. Now, when you play your clip, you can see the sound moving through the graphic. So that was a closer look at how you can work with speed ramping, how you can adjust audio and how you can save yourself a bit of time with themes. Well, give it a thumbs up if you found this video informative and don't forget to subscribe for more questions, comments, leave them below and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao. Ahoy.